Welcome to the Take a Listing Today podcast, where our hosts, Jim Studebaker and Todd Robertson, give you strategies to get you out of the office right now so you can take a new listing today. And now, here's Jim and Todd. (laughs) Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Take a Listing Today podcast. (laughs) Welcome, I'm Jim Studebaker along with Todd Robertson. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And as always, over in the producer's corner is Lisa Gray, the producer. Hi. Hey. Hey. Can't wait, great show. Great All show. right, don't forget to visit our website, takealistingtoday.com to learn about our upcoming shows and to join us live on a future podcast where you might win some great Ooh. prizes. Speaking of great prizes, this is not a great prize, <laughs> except for Todd and I. Look at this, our fancy mugs. Can we get a right Here, up of that? Here's what's Look great about that. our mugs. I was thinking about this driving into the studio. Our, mm-hmm. our producer got us some mugs with our podcast yeah. name, Take a Listing Today, with our caricatures. And I was driving here thinking, <laughs> it's been a year and a few months now, and I mm-hmm. thought, what did we get our producer? And I... My mind got thinking. I'm thinking a couple of headaches. A headache. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think that's she, really. I think she gets. Yes. She gets joy and oh, that's excitement right. uh, every week when we take these shows. Right. And, right. Right. So that's kind of what. Yeah. Uh, what's so in thank it for you, her. producer. We love these. These we are great. You thank are you welcome. very much. These will soon be wonderful. available in the online gift shop. Yes, um, they are going to be pricey though. So oh, come with your credit yes. card and gold rimmed. Yeah, yeah. That uh, it, le- it looks just like us too. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. And we'll <laughs> sign it with the sharpie. Yeah, <laughs> autograph. That would cost extra. <laughs> yes, I think that is totally fair. So you decided to join us on a a great day today mm. because we're going to talk about how you can revolutionize your productivity post pandemic. Now, depending on where you are in the country and when you're watching this, because sometimes people don't watch these shows until later. Hopefully it's post. It might still be. It could be during. The right. Think of it. Uh, you know, use this how it would be appropriate for your particular area. But regardless of where you are, if you're back at work, congratulations. Nice to be back to work, isn't it? So now that you're back, you need to create a plan for yourself to maximize your productivity in the months remaining in this year, 2020. So here are some steps that will help you revolutionize your productivity in the post-pandemic real estate market. Some very simple steps Lisa has come up with for our show today. Grab your paper and pen and take some notes. We're gonna give you a lot of substance today and and just sift through what resonates with you and make sure that you implement because we're bringing the power today. We are, so step number one is reflection. Mm. Spend some time looking back on your business pre-pandemic. Start with the money aspect. How much did you make in the six months or so leading up to the lockdown? Were you where you needed to be? Were you able to stay on budget? What activities generated the leads that led to those commission checks that you received? And what activities did you do were a complete waste of time and money? Exactly. And and as we go through this, what hit me was also take a reflection on how you're doing personally. Because we all know people who maybe mentally had some challenges during this time that uh, even physically, maybe they didn't stay in the kind of shape they were. And we all know that how your personal life is is going to mirror or reflect your business life. So take a reflection on that as well. It's very, very accurate. Now, once you've done that, you need to figure out how many times the successful activities were repeated once they worked. For example, X number of postcards mailed resulted in Y number of leads, which resulted in how many transactions totaling what revenue? I didn't realize there was a math quiz here yes. today. So <laughs> right. Hopefully right. we all got that down. <laughs> yeah. While income is the final measure of your progress from period to period, it's a useless figure if you don't also examine what activities generated that money. Which brings us into step number two, which is being well, organized, exactly. right? Exactly, and what you just said, I think, is how I would say 80 to 90% of realtors live out there, they live haphazardly. They don't know, oh, I got a closing here, two months later I got a closing, like chicken with the head cut off. Right. As opposed to systems in place, now you know, like like any great small business would, what's working, what's not. The oil change person knows that, the the hair salon knows that, all the small businesses, what's working, what's not. Really, you ought to be tracking that all the time, not just- Correct. Doing stuff, you gotta track what you do and what marketing works. Right. So. So step two, be organized and be in 
control. Now that you know where you stand financially and which activities to resume and which ones to kick to the curb, it's time to take a look at the systems that you use to keep you on track. So just as you did with your lead generation techniques, think about the systems that you use, such as your CRM and your processes. Here's some things to ask yourself. Do they provide consistent quality? Do they save you time? Do they help simplify your business life? Are they efficient? And do they lack qualities that you need? <laughs> hmm. And I wrote down here in our production meeting, no feel good work, right? So, and we all know friends in different industries, mm -hmm. even real estate, um, they get home at the end of the day and went, oh, honey, how was your day? Oh, it was great. I worked on my marketing all day. Uh, <laughs> how many prospects did you talk to? Mm. How many listing appointments? People like to do the feel good work. That's not good. Oh, no, there we go. Oh, there. <laughs> and throw a sound effect in there for that. So no feel good work. Take a look at these questions and just take a look at high priority activities and we can delegate the rest. Mm -hmm. That is what makes a person successful. Exactly. So with the right systems in place, you should be able, as you mentioned, delegate the work to anybody, an assistant and a partner, receive the same high quality customer service results when you do that. Overall, all of your systems should save you time and help you grow your real estate business. And if they don't, it might be time to reconsider their use and find something new. Maybe even a mm. new line of work. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right. Anybody out there? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And just a reminder, raise your hand if you... Wow. Saying. All right. Beautiful. Raise your hand or what we're saying. Wow. Yeah, glued. Well, I think they're I think they're curious about the you uh, know the yeah. I bet if we said we'd give away a mug Oh and then a we'd get some oh. some action, but we actually don't have any extras of these, so I'm not saying that. Back order. <laughs> <They're>, um, <laughs> back order. Right. Maybe down the road you get some. Huge demand, yes. All right. So what system should you be using? Theoretically, you can have a real estate system for every aspect of your business, from prospecting to closing gifts, even down to the proper way to make a pot of coffee for the office. Well, and as funny as that is, systems really just allow you to do two things. You're more efficient, but it also reduces stress. Take Steve yes. Jobs. Uh -huh. Why did Steve Jobs dress the same way? Why does Zuckerberg dress the same way? And their minds are like, hey, I'm going to go focus on changing the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to, Steve Jobs had the jeans and the black mock turtleneck. He didn't right. care. That was his routine. Right. He goes in the closet and there's 20 turtlenecks, <laughs> black. <laughs> Grab one. Doesn't matter which one. Yep. And off he goes. The wife. Very smart. Gives him a hard time. He just says, boom, just go check the bank account. We're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So if you'd like to tell your wife, just go check the bank account. Here's some systems that you might want to uh, yeah. include. Yeah. Some checklists. Let us know how that goes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call with your complaints, please. Yeah. All right. Checklists are a great way to keep track of all of this. Mm. Use them for what to do after you take a listing. Use, uh, keep track of the steps that you need to take before your listing presentation. What points to cover in a buyer's consultation Keep track of lead generation efforts and stay on top of your marketing steps. Another system to put in place is to automate your follow-up. What a great idea. Let me interject on what you said first about the checklist because I love that for a lot of reasons and a realtor could use that in various ways. So let's say they're on the phone and they're calling you to get a listing appointment, right? And it's a maybe. Well, guess what? If a realtor has those checklists, they can email them to you and say, mm -hmm. okay, just take a look. Here are the steps we're going to do. In other words, overwhelm them with what you do to sell their home. So they're like, boom, I need that person. Other realtors are not going to be able to email the checklist. Here's what we do. Getting it ready for the listing. Mm -hmm. Here's what we get. Boom. So there's magic plus a for sale by owner. Imagine you're driving by a for sale by owner and you have your checklist printed out. You can go introduce yourself. No, 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 we're selling it by ourselves. Well, great, well, here's a checklist. Um, go ahead and use my checklist. Good luck. They're gonna right. get overwhelmed and possibly call you. That's, Definitely be overwhelmed. Clever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love that idea. That's you know, overwhelm with all that stuff. They say, I, there's no way I could do this by myself. Over I guess I'd better have you list my house. It, exactly, overwhelm mm -hmm. them with the truth. Well, right. And universally, check, checklists are great when you have too much on your plate. 
which right. I believe realtors do on a daily basis. So now you put take it out of your head, especially before you go to bed at night is a great time as well. <laughs> get it out of your head, get it on paper. Now you can sleep. Now you're not going to have monkey mind going <laughs> right. on all night when you're trying to sleep. Right. And uh, very often, I think even prioritizing those checklists. So you, you get up in the morning, you're thinking, oh, it's going to be one of those days. How can I be split in 20 directions? How can I accomplish this? Get that checklist written out, get it prioritized, even write numbers next to it. This has to, this is one, this is two, this is, th I'm going to do them in this order. And then <coughs> as you knock them out, boy, there's nothing better than crossing off something. On the exactly. Yes. It, it's yeah. a great feeling. And then Brian, yeah, Brian Tracy in one of his books talked about eat the frog first. So if you do have a checklist and you start knocking off the hardest things, well, you feel better during the day. Your strength oh, gets yeah. more momentum. Your confidence gets momentum. Mm -hmm. And then you start dominating the rest of the day. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So the fortune in these automated follow-up systems is, is, is truly in the follow-up with your clients. So create a system that will save you time when performing this critical task from drip email campaigns to direct mail campaigns. Concentrating on your follow-up strategies is imperative. And would you know that Prospects Plus, the sponsor of today's podcast, offers targeted direct mail campaigns ideal for your sphere, farm, and many of the top targeted real estate niches. And I wrote down here, and I really believe this because we've done a podcast on follow-up. We've done a podcast on leads. We've done, I wrote down here this, that um, if a realtor just implemented this point from this podcast and really implemented it strong, made it a system, they will get an extra, I believe, between five and 10 closings because their competition, and we know that, right? We talk to them every day, we hear them. They're like hit and run realtors. Most of them are hit and run. Right. The ones that follow up, no doesn't mean no, no just means no right now. Exactly. Right, so. and when you're sending an email, uh, if you have a drip campaign or you're sending out a series of postcards over a period of time or a monthly newsletter, that becomes you, that is your voice. Mm. You can, you know, you can eat, time is money. So you can either do everything, which means you have a limited amount of things that you do, right? And a limit, limited amount of ways that you are out in the world touching people. Or you can have the systems that are out there touching people on your behalf through emails, through direct mail campaigns. And that's how you magnify and you grow a business. That's how you become productive. Yes. That's how you become That's productive. how you become a listing legend, right? Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ooh, listing legend. Oh, Sounds like a good oh, title oh, for oh, 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 you had to get in oh, a plug just there. Just got in a shameful plug. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> They're going fast, so. Yep. All right. So yep. if you're keeping track, step one, mm. reflection. Step two, be organized. Step three is your mindset. Mm. So here's the conundrum. Being productive makes us feel good, but we need to feel good to be in the right mindset to be productive. So how the heck do we get that circle going? <sighs> That's a well, tough one. It is tough. But one tip that we've learned from productivity experts is to maintain a daily work schedule sure it may look like nothing your schedule what it may look nothing like your schedule prior, prior oh pandemic. prior to the pandemic it may not look like right. right it might be a little bit different it might be a little bit different right your workday may be shorter you may not always have showings or listing appointments to go to but you still need to generate that business nurture your sphere and work on those parts of your business that become neglected during the busier pre-pandemic times. Mm. So build your work schedule around the time of day when you're typically most productive and most capable of concentrating. And in terms of mindset, here's, and I think everybody, right? Us, the great CEOs in the world, Jeff Bezos. I mean, everyone's gonna deal with this at some point. And I give Mel Robbins credit in terms of, she had a great idea in terms of mindset, like, okay, you know you have to do something, but you're letting everything else get in the way, right? You could be distracted. She said, you've got to override it. She says, boom, no, five, four, three, two, one, go. Mm -hmm. So she just overrides what the monkey mind mm -hmm. w would say to do. Oh, you could blow that off. Oh, go rest or go. No, she goes, give yourself five, four, three, two, one, and go. Whether it's going to the gym, whether it's prospecting or something just else. Go. Well, and not everybody works the same way. So some people right. like to get up at five in the morning. They are just on fire first thing in the morning. And that's where they're hitting their hard stuff. They know this. We all know ourselves well enough right. to know, is it, do I do the lighter things earlier in the day, the simpler things earlier in the day? And now I hit the tough stuff nice point. after 2 PM, because I know that's when I become on fire. Right. You really you get to know yourself. You know, when you're at your best and set up that schedule to complement that. And exactly. that's how you're going to get more productive and get things done because if you fight against 
that. If you think, oh, everybody's got the miracle morning, they get up, <laughs> they, they meditate, they exercise, mm -hmm. they do all these different things before 5 a.m. like they're in the army or something. <laughs> And I can't make that work. You're going to get frustrated. Don't fight against who you are. Work with that. Yes, exactly. Be good to yourself, especially right. in these times. We have to be right. good to ourselves. Yeah. Right. Hopefully you're the only person you're hanging out with because, <laughs> you know, everybody's... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so if you're keeping notes, step number one was reflection. Step two, be organized. Step three, mm. mindset. Step number four, stop being a generalist. One of the most interesting dichotomies... You told me we're going to use big words anymore, Lisa. <laughs> She knows what colleges we Did, went to. Why is she still right, putting she, words like this in our in our production notes? Back up, back up. You didn't have this word in part of their curriculum, so that's today's word. That's okay, today's they didn't word. teach that you, word you at Cal State Bakersfield. Times by the end of today. All right, did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, dichotomy. Yeah. Okay, good. One of the most interesting dichotomies apparent in real estate professionals is between the longing to stand out and the strict adherence to the standard way of doing business, which is why the public often claims all real estate agents are alike. Let's hope you don't fit in that category. Mm. Ditch that mentality that you're an all-purpose generalist who specializes in all areas of real estate. Become the true expert in a niche area of real estate. And those of you taking notes right, right now, write down the following, and you all know this. Think about right being a generalist versus going after a niche. And the truth is, it's kind of like the light bulb versus the laser. Mm -hmm. The light bulb is going to light the room a little bit all over. The laser will cut through steel. When that realtor gets serious about the niche and jumps all in with their marketing and lets the people know, boom, I'm the neighborhood specialist, boom, then everybody else is fighting for second place. And those are the successful agents, the ones who can focus like a laser on a particular product, be the expert correct. at it. Correct, correct. Well, and, and they will and, lead. And a generalist is a, is a master of all trades, right? Right. That's who they are. And boy, how do you get your, through your day and be productive when you're a master of all trades mm. instead of... Uh, you know, the master of one or two. I'm great at three or four and things, right? you become the expert at those couple things, and now you know exactly where you're going. Your education is there. Your webinar, everything you do, the books you read, it's all about reinforcing those couple niches or those couple areas that you, you're going after um, and pushing away the extraneous, even if that means at times pushing away business that doesn't fit that area of focus that you have. Mm -hmm. Being a generalist in the short term may feel like it's making you money. In the long term, the agents that focus in and specialize, those are the winners. And those the ones that you winners. turn away, get a referral fee from somebody else in your office. Absolutely, and absolutely. That'll, that'll you, be yeah. perfect. Yep, yep. All right, so once you do that, once you focus on something, your productivity goes up due to your efforts being more focused. In addition, your content will become more valuable, your brand better defined, and your entire real estate practice will be more unique, translating to greater success. Greater success. And here's what that equates to those of you listening, watching, taking notes. Um, I want you to write one thing down, that in a world of uncertainty, start stacking the certainty of you, your life, your business right now, bringing that to the table. So in a world of uncertainty, the person that brings that certainty to the table, that's the person who wants to list their home with. Right, because that, that's their biggest expense. So, so work on yourself, work on your business so you can come from that place and separate yourself from the competition. And that is everything that you need to know how to revolutionize your productivity post-pandemic. Did we miss anything? No. Nope. All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, today's podcast is brought to you by Prospects Plus, offering real estate postcards that work. Design, print, and mail in minutes. Be sure to visit their website at prospectsplus.com and search for the real estate postcards that work. I bet a bunch of things will come up there. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week for another great show. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.